happy motivational Monday. Darlings, can I ask you a quick question? Even when I'm on a Zoom call, or particularly when I start a Zoom call, I'm still putting on perfume as if I'm actually seeing people. What is that about? I That's do that madness. as well. That's your exactly madness. with the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, waste I, I, of money, I, waste of time. Yes, is, it's ambiance, darling. Go on, Debbie, no, sorry. And then the thing is, I think, it's because it's like a, it's a thing when you get ready to go out, when you get ready to go on, on stage or all of those things, the sort of yeah. last thing you do is you spritz, you know, you give yourself yeah. a spritz, it's kind of like, you do. Yeah, it's a jurage, isn't it? So it gives yeah. you that sort of like little, uh, well, that's not. Yeah. Anyway, so, Sherry, am I hearing you like to smell? Is that what you're saying? No, I, I mean, this isn't smelly vision, if that's what you thought, Harriet. <laughs> so we can't smell you at all. <laughs> But I, 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 just, I mean, I, I have perfume and I, I constantly spray it on me anyway for no reason whatsoever. There yeah. you go. Even we if I don't it. go out, even if yes. I, don't get a cup of tea. I do it every day, but it's the Zoom call. I do it in the morning I and I like you. It's crazy. It's the Zoom. What must yeah. spray? It's crazy. And now, right. The room See? looks good too, doesn't it? The room looks good. I mean, it smells good. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, we have the amazing and talented. Caroline Redmond Lusher. Are we going to see a bit of film first? Sorry to We are. You. We are. Yeah. Now, I'll, I'll tell you about Caroline because Caroline has created Rock Choir, which has expanded beyond belief and done so much amazing things for so many people. Um, we, we see a clip now of the video, The Rock Choir. Like And now I would like to bring in Caroline Redmond Lusher, who not only created and was the founder of the Rock Choir, but also she's an award-winning, a multi-award winning recording artist in her own right. Caroline, where are you? Hi, Caroline. <laughs> Everything. Hi. Welcome to our nest. Thank Welcome you for having you. me. It's a very glamorous nest. Uh, thank, thank you. Darling. We'll pay Lovely you later. To see you. And the hat is truly outstanding, Dee. Oh, thank you, Caroline. Well, this is actually the, the, the hat, which was designed by Judith Benting. I've worn it a couple of times, but oh. as Ascot's coming up, I thought, got to wear it. And gotta is gotta there anything it. at the back? Is there anything? Well, look at this, look. Oh, there is. <laughs> you, can, you can wear it that way as well. Oh, I do, oh, I do like it that way. And it matches I love that. So it's yeah. fabulous, darling. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I'll talk to you about that afterwards, Caroline. Anyway, okay. Caroline, this is about, this is about you oh. and all the wonderful things that you've done and the rock choir, which, huge congratulations. Thank you. Because it's gone from strength to strength, hasn't it? 16 years on now. Um, oh, wow. obviously, obviously, with the pandemic, we've, we've taken a hit, like lots of other organisations and choirs, but... We're nearly there now in getting all our members back. And we were at 33,000 singers, amateur singers, um, up until Amazing. March. So we, we, we know they're out there. We just need them to come back. Great. And how does it all, tell us about it. How, do, how did it all start and how does it work? Well, it's, tell it's interesting because years and years ago, I used to be um, a lounge singer up in London. I used to play in, and sing in the London hotels, like the Dorchester and places like that. And I'd done that for years since I was 15. I'd lied about my age to various establishments <laughs> and, um, and earned some cash singing and playing. And I was basically um, working on my craft. I wanted to be a performer and a singer. I got my degree in contemporary music up at Salford and then went to London, started singing in all those kind of places. And um, my father dragged me out, out of them in the end. He came to see me in one of the hotels and said, this has got to stop. No. I'll just <laughs> carry on singing to loads of men sitting around the piano smoking cigars. <laughs> um, he chose a bad night <laughs> to come. And then so I came out of that and I got offered a job teaching A-level music uh, and performing arts at Farnborough Sixth One College, a huge Sixth One College. And I had to teach students who were studying the three art forms, drama, dance and music. But I had the ones who didn't want to do the music section, um, <laughs> who wanted to be thespians or dancers, but hated the music. And I had to help them get through their exam without them being able to read music or having any confidence. So I created a choir around the piano in the lunch times where I would teach them the pop songs that I used to sing up in London. Um, 
songs that they would enjoy and I split them into very easy three part harmony and taught by rote. So I would sing a phrase, they'd sing it back and they'd learn it that way. And then right. I introduced a little dance routine and we would perform to the other students. And that choir went from a group of 16 up to about 140 students. And I ended, it ended up becoming a really big thing for the college. And what I noticed about them, that 16 to 18 <coughs> year age group is their, their confidence improved, their grades improved. I didn't know what it was we were doing that was affecting them so well. But after a while, one of the mums said, can't you do one for us? Can't you do a choir for us? Oh. And that was it. So I handed my notice in and started to advertise. Uh, my mum came up with the name Rock Choir. And um, in Farnham in Surrey, I put posters up in a couple of cafes and along came 70 people on the first night. Oh, wow. and, uh, I didn't know if anyone would go. We put some chairs up. Oh, God. I quit my job <laughs> you know. um, and they, they arrived and, and by the end of the first hour and a half they were on their feet shouting cheering some of them were crying they'd been told years ago that they couldn't sing by their singing teacher at school um, a huge boost of emotion and confidence from that first session and it literally went from strength to strength in my area alone geographically I ran as many choirs as I could then I took on my first musician and trained her for a year and I kept saying to her I I don't know what it is that's having this emotional impact on people but their lives are changing because of the group singing element each week now of course 16 years I totally know what's going on in the brain and the impact singing has but I now have 80 musicians working in the team I have full-time staff of 30 uh, at HQ in Farnham, and we are in 400 communities across the country with 33,000 singers. So oh, yeah. the whole thing just mind just blowing. Crazy. Yeah, mind blowing. That's mind amazing. Blowing. It really is. It's meant, it's meant to be a glamorous, plat, multi-layered experience. It's not just singing each week. It's the, the diary gets filled up with events and socials and performances. Yeah. Friends, friendships are made. Um, confidence is built, learning new skills, going on stage, even at the local Christmas lights, is a huge event for a lot of people um, yeah. to go up in front of their friends and family. So suddenly they're full of joy and their, their family can't believe that their mum has been on stage. And, <laughs> you know, and all the friendships that are made, they then celebrate afterwards and, and they've got something to, to share. Cause it's really hard to meet people, meet new friends when you're older. Yeah. You're not mm. in any any kind of platform where you can meet other people apart from maybe your job so yeah it's true communities 400 communities all connected we bring them together every few years at big arena so they all sing together and they all dance together oh. um oh, to all 30 40 songs that they've been learning but all pop songs so very different oh. from the, the kind of classical choir um yeah and it's just it's just made it you know I, I know how important music is. It's very important to me um, for memories and the, uh, you know, things <clears throat> that make you cry, which sometimes you want to, and things that make you get up and just get out there. Chuck Berry, you never can tell. If ever you want <laughs> to have a song that makes you get up and go, use that yeah. song, Chuck yeah. Berry. But I work for a company called Avery and they have lovely homes of people retiring, but some of them some of the floors are Alzheimer's <clears throat> and, um, uh, they, you know, particular floors and then dementia floor. And so I go to the, you know, I visit the homes and see everybody and they have their music days. <clears throat> and I have actually seen miracles happen with music. I mean, ladies or men that are sitting in chairs, quite advanced dementia and Alzheimer's and haven't moved for a long time. I was there one day and the guy who was an Elvis impersonator came on and sang. And I went over and put my hands out and the two ladies put their hands out to me, stood up and were rocking to that music, literally <laughs> rocking to that music. Because the memory somewhere of that music brought them together. Admittedly, when the music was over, they sat down. First of all, it, it was very emotional, but I realised what music meant, and you must see that all the time. Well, it's interesting with dementia and Alzheimer's, because the part of the brain that um, has musical memory isn't affected, isn't usually affected by those diseases. And yes. It means that if, if that person who's suffering from dementia and Alzheimer's listens to a song that meant a lot to them, 
at some point in their lives, it actually, they'll remember it because it's not being affected. They haven't lost that. Uh, wow. So that doesn't, it doesn't surprise me that two ladies heard the song and stood up because they would have danced to it years ago. Years ago. Um, and, they, and then they go back when the song is over because yes. that part of the brain has, is, it's, it's been triggered and then it's not triggered. Yeah. So it's really, it's really interesting what music can do. And, and you do hear about the, the, those kind of establishments having musicians in to sing those older songs. Um, yeah. Late to the youth of the people who are in there. But, but what you were saying about, you know, all those people coming and 400 people together and what it does to those people and gives them a life, and yeah. gives them, a, you know, and some hope. And it, it's joyous, it must be joyous to watch it. It, it's highly emotional. We're all crying all the time in rock yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's always something, there's always a drama and something emotional. But certainly when, when we bring everyone together, yeah, there, there is an energy in, in the arena that you just can't capture on, on video. You know, we watch it afterwards and go, where, 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 where was that magic? You know, and it, it's yeah. having, having all those souls together, all breathing together, together at the same time and that you just can't beat it. And certainly, I mean, Alzheimer's dementia, which is so, um, so important um, to, to, to bring music to those people. Music also, and group singing particularly. Group singing, there was a study a couple of years ago and Rock Choir took part. So we ran a Rock Choir session and they were testing blood. They were testing all, all sorts of uh, parts of the body afterwards. And apparently group singing, uh, there were 20% more endocannabinoids were released after a session of group singing than dancing or cycling particularly group I, I think I get that completely yeah. yeah it's so interesting you say that because I was thinking I've done lots of musicals and even if they're sad musicals you're always on a high at the end of the show yeah yeah, and yeah. that's because you've spent the whole evening singing or doing you know and often it's a sad show but it's you're I didn't realize why there's always that fantastic feeling you've just explained it yeah I wanted to talk to you about being a working mother, darling, because we're all working mothers. <laughs> um, I think I'm the only one who's not a working grandmother. I'm not bitter at my children, just raging. <laughs> um, but um, I have lots of pets instead. Anyway, um, waiting for the grandchildren. But how are you finding, because you have a little one. Yeah. How do you find it, darling? Plate spinning, the feeding, the work, oh. all that stuff. <laughs> Do you, know, do you know what he was born in August last year? So, yeah. so of, course, of course we were in lockdown and Rock Choir needed me more than any other time, I think. And I reverted back to the kind of workload I used to do at the beginning when I was building the company. Yeah. And, and I, I worked right through um, sit, sitting here actually with huge fat pregnant ankles because I hadn't moved all day, you know, oh. <laughs> our boss felt awful <laughs> and, and thinking, the one time I'm pregnant, there's a pandemic. <laughs> you know? yeah. And and um and as soon as he was well, I had a C section and I took a week and and then I began work again and I felt so <sighs> under pressure wow. to contribute. I, I just felt under pressure. I I've never been happy taking a holiday and, and letting everyone else work while I'm away. And mm. I am a workaholic and I recognize that. But I, I took the baby in. Um, to meet the team, some oh, I say in it was all social distancing and things. Yeah. But my one of my colleagues was I caught her crying. I caught her crying because she was under so much pressure, and I just thought I have to help. I can't mm. lounge about taking. I'm yeah. not lounge. It's not that <laughs> offensive. <laughs> to, 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 <laughs> but, you <laughs> but you know, I've been at home just doing one thing, and I'm used to multitasking. And we it's got we got to Christmas, thing. and I the project I took on was to release a Christmas single. We we often yeah. release Christmas single, oh. and it's a big project. And I I took it on, and it it got to the release on the eleventh of eleventh uh, of December, and I totally crashed and burned afterwards. I I just couldn't I couldn't do it. And little Hamilton had reflux, so he, oh, he was that's crying joy. and need, and we didn't know it was reflux. Yeah, and of you're learning oh. what the baby oh, needs, and um, my team. I said to my team, I'm re I have to take some time. I have to take mm. some maternity time to just focus and get myself used to the patterns he needs and what I need to do for him. Fortunately, my sister was there the whole time, um, hugely supportive. She's got a little two-year-old, so I just got given everything. <laughs> oh, brilliant. So I, was really, I, said, I didn't even know I needed this, but this is great. <laughs> oh, yeah, perfect. And, do and, you, and how then, do you find it now, darling? How are you coming through all that now? 
Oh, it's great. Everything is, I just say everything is easy, but we just had our first projectile vomit the other night. Joy. Oh, oh, always fun. Congratulations. Yeah, I was thinking we could go away with that, but suddenly there's a lot that comes out of a very little body. It is. It's a, it's a miracle. And it's just the beginning, darling. Just to know that you won't sleep for the next 30 years. Um, oh. They say you will. In, you don't sleep because you're checking your children all night. And then as they mature, they don't come home because they're out on the town. You still don't sleep. <laughs> just saying. Enjoy. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. And then the minute you do start to sort of just think oh, everything's okay, the grandchildren arrive, and then then that's then it that's it. Starts but again. I'm not gonna, not again. Again. My daughter, when I took her on a plane when she was two, uh, we went to Hong Kong, eighteen-hour flight, oh. and uh, she was. I had very very long hair. I've got long hair now, but it was very long, and she was sick in my hair two oh. hours into the flight. Oh, and, joy! Um, I remember thinking, I've got another sixteen hours of this, <laughs> of, of, of sick in my oh. hair. Um, so therefore, motherhood is fabulous. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> can you show us your gorgeous little boy? Is he yeah. there? Yeah. Well, I, mean, I know he might be out with his girlfriend, but he <laughs> <laughs> he's a bit of a. He's going to like you all. He's he's actually particularly got a thing for blondes. Oh, there you um, go. Oh, so, so, yeah. There you so, go. Sorry, yeah. No, so two of us. I'm afraid. Can I just leave now. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> let me let me get him in. Oh, yeah. Hey. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hamilton. Oh. Is this his first Zoom call? I think it is, you know. Oh, yeah. oh he's yes. not interested. Just he's watching Daddy leave. Hi, Hamilton. <laughs> Hamilton is such a great Hello. name, Caroline. Oh, Why yeah. Hamilton? It's the capital of Bermuda. And we go to Bermuda as often oh. as we can. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hello. Yes. Hi. I know that Hello. he's smiling at me. I don't know because I'm a brunette, so I know he's smiling at me. Just <laughs> oh, thought no, it was me. Smiling at the light. Don't look at the, <laughs> look at the screen. Oh, oh, look. I love it. It's all so random and heavenly. Oh, <laughs> he's he's absolutely gorgeous. So what's happening next? Boy. What are you going to do next? That well, apart from change the baby's nappy. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know imminently. Well, we've got the NEC Arena booked for next year. Um, right. to celebrate, well, it was meant to celebrate 15 years of rock choir, but we'll be at 17 yeah. years uh, yes. by the time we get there. And then wow. we'll bring everyone together. We'll bring, I don't know what, we'll bring everyone together at that arena event. But I think the main focus we've got is to, to look after the Rockies. We call them the Rockies, the rock choir members. Um, and, and we need to make sure they're okay after what everyone's been through. So mm. our date coming up is um, the 21st of June hoping that government on the 14th will say yes because there's been recent u-turn in terms of singing yeah. so the yeah. singing community has been up in arms asking why because there's been no evidence no new evidence there's a big petition out you can imagine um, yeah. Uh, yeah. so two million people in the uk sing in some form of choir or group singing so there's a, that's i mean it's not a lot compared to the total amount of people in the uk but there's that's a lot of people in one go to, to, to yeah to yes so we, we our focus at rock choir is, is just to get everyone back in the room as quickly as possible and uh continue the, their journey with us um wasn't it wasn't it the rockies that sang at your wedding yeah oh, happy day yeah oh. I, I had um i had 300 members at that point and they all came to wow. the wedding oh, so yeah we, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't get them all in now if they, <laughs> if they no I, I just say it's unique. It, it's a multi-layered yeah. experience where we're tapping into every feel-good activity that we can bring in to make the members feel better about themselves and have a better yeah. life around us. Fabulous. Well, it's so, very, um, very revolutionary and it's brilliant. And thank you so much for joining us. You've got the most gorgeous little boy and we, we, we here at Wonderbirds. Yes! He's the yeah. first Wonderbird baby that we've had. So it well, is. we'd like to give him Give him a big kiss from us. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to Thank see you, you soon, Caroline. Thank, Thank you very much, much. Caroline. Thank, Thank you. Bye. 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 Oh, joy. Oh, 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 how beautiful. I mean, I don't oh, have any hormones baby. left. I don't have any hormones left, but the, whatever one and a half I have is now racing around my body. With yeah. That boy, how divine. I know. Oh, absolutely boy. gorgeous. So now, who have we got coming in, guys? Oh, it's Mike, Mike Simpkins and his book club. Yes. Oh, yes, Mike. Hello, darling. Hey. Hello, Welcome Wonderbirds. Back. Good afternoon. Yeah. How lovely to see you all. 
I'd love, love to, to see you. you. What Thank is on the, what have you got today for us? Well, one of the advantages of being an unpaid book reviewer is that you can choose what you like. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and if you choose to sack me because you don't like my choices, then it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Uh, but you'd miss us, darling, wouldn't you? I you'd would. Miss I'd, us. Miss, I'd yeah. miss that hat, I'll tell you. Yes, I know. I like that hat. All I can <laughs> say you. is somewhere in London there's a Ford Fiesta without any seat covers on it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Very true. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> so I've taken another real sideways swipe and um, at, the, at, the, at my book review for this, this week, and there's a bit of a story behind it because... One of the things that has kept me sane during lockdown, and I really mean sane, uh, it's at times been the difference between madness and sanity, has been the fact that I go two, three, four times a week to my local Lido, which is unheated. Wow. Um, yeah. So I, I'll get on to the book in a minute. But I so I went in on March the 29th when it opened because I couldn't wait to get back because I knew... How cold was it? Eight degrees. Oh my oh. God! Yeah, and um, it's. Uh, I went in last at uh, the weekend. It's now twenty-one, but you know, I did some hard yards. The point is that most mornings, early in the mornings when I go, I always find myself plowing up and down next to Alistair Campbell. Oh my ah. goodness! Who is a devoted cold water swimmer? Oh. And a little bit by asking him and getting into conversation poolside, as we habituates call it, and, and half by sort of reading stuff and hearing stuff, I decided to have a read of his book called Living Better, How I Learned to Survive Depression. And, oh, yeah, yes. And one of the reasons, one of the reasons is I thought it would be a good read, because if nothing else, Alistair Campbell is a fine writer, and he's obviously got the brain the size of Rutland but also I think like most people and I, I don't want to get into you know too gloomy territory here but I think like most people there are times when I, all of us have wondered whether we suffered from depression and I yeah, was of really course, interested, of course. Very interested to find out whether actually I did by reading hopefully a really inclusive book and I have to say it's a really terrific read uh, I mean it's right. a bit like it's a bit like sharing a pint with Alistair he's um Alistair as I now call him <laughs> I mean, you know, he shoots straight from the hip. It's very powerful, but he's very, very good at explaining exactly what depression is. And oh, what I'm going to go and get that. Yeah. yeah. I've Sounds decided, brilliant. I decided that as a result of reading his book that I don't suffer from depression. Ah, oh, good. I, 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 helps, suffer from being, I suffer, like all of us do, from getting fed up with life and some mornings deciding to turn over and have another hour's sleep and you yeah. know, why, why won't my agent call and why did I not get that self-tape that's not but that's <laughs> not what <laughs> Alistair Campbell's gone through he's he, yeah. no he describes very very powerfully the 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 what it's like and you know the, the interesting things I'm sure you know because you ladies are much more versed in this sort of thing than men are uh, is that is that what's interesting is how quickly it descends on him mm. so, you know, it's not something oh yes actually can almost happen he describes very, very movingly how it happened during a dinner party one night, you know, but somewhere Ordinary. between main course and dessert, he suddenly felt completely hopeless about life. And therefore, it's one of the reasons why he goes swimming, because he finds immersion yes. in cold water and exercise and the discipline of that terrific. He That's also beautiful. talks yeah. about family, doesn't he, and how it affects his family. And it's so moving and so beautiful. Mm, yeah. Of course, you know, families are, 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 they have to clear up the mess a lot with people. Mm, yeah, yeah, exactly. The impact. And her, his wife has been absolutely fantastic. And the kids Extraordinary, are, yeah. Mm. But he's, uh, you know, he's a fascinating man. And, it's, you know, it's interesting because sometimes when I'm swimming by the, at the Lido, there's um, Alistair Campbell in one lane and Boris Johnson's brother, Joe, in the, in the other. Oh, God. <laughs> Goodness, got, some Lido. Where is this place? Then you've got Charles Dance plowing up the middle of them as well. So <laughs> oh no! Where is it? Where is it, it Mike? It's at uh, Parliament Hill at the bottom of Gospel Oak. What is a Lido? What does that actually mean? A, a swimming pool outdoors? Is that it's it? Swimming yeah. pool outdoors. Exactly. That's yeah. it, darling. Yeah. We <laughs> had them as that's children. Really. We had them yeah. as children. We did. We always go to the Lido. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was a huge amount built just before <laughs> the, the Second World War. That's uh, right. Um, 
yeah. uh, to, to give it to everybody, particularly in London. And, uh, mm -hmm. a, and, and a, fair, a fair number of them got zapped once um, we discovered Torremolinos. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, wonder, I wonder where the nearest one to me is in Surrey. There must be one near here somewhere. Yeah. Um, well, actually, just while I'm here, ladies, let me just get you this. Oh, oh. a Lido book. If you want to know, now this is another recommendation, which is just out, the, <laughs> Lido, the Lido Guide. So this is, is a nice juxtaposition to Alistair Campbell's book, is that if any of uh, your listeners or viewers watching this want to have a go at a Lido, I thoroughly recommend this. It's got all the details of every Lido in Britain. Oh, wow. wow. It's amazing. It, as you can see, it, as you can see from the cover, it is a delightful thing to look over as well. That's amazing. Yes, oh, and Mike, yeah. can I just I'm going ask to have you? to look out for a Surrey leader. I quite quite fancy the, you know, to be sort of kicked up the arse first thing in the morning. If you yeah. excuse the expression, oh, no, they're <laughs> freezing. <laughs> and it, I remember being in school, and we used to go in the winter, and you had to break the ice on top of the water. <laughs> wow, Jeez. where was that? Really? I was going to uh, say, are I, they I heated? Uh, hmm. Nottinghamshire, hmm. and and uh, in a little village in Nottinghamshire, and just outside the village was the Lido. It was a beautiful Lido, but it didn't occur to the teachers that it might be cold. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and we were blue. Goodness. We were literally blue. So we got so, out. But we, and it was the sweeties that we were given was the reason that actually that we got in. Of course. We were given sweeties when we got out. So. Uh, are they Awful. heated, Michael? Are they heated? Some are. Some are wonderfully heated. They are now. Then what, they yeah. weren't then. No. <laughs> no, but the, the, the one I go to isn't heated. And it, it is interesting. A lot of the habitués there who are there all the time, they said to me, if once you get used to the cold water, you will start to find that you dislike it when it's too warm. And yes. it's absolutely true. You get such a hit, Ooh. such a hit. There have been days in the last five months when I've gone, sometimes at eight in the morning, it's been raining, overcast, and I thought, what am I doing? You feel such a <laughs> loser. But I tell you, you come out feeling like a yeah. kid. Fantastic. So um, heartily recommended. So Alice okay. Campbell's book, Living Better, The Lido Guide by Emma Pusel and Janet Wilkinson. And to, between them, you'll find something to live for. Oh, wow, I think that's marvellous. That's amazing. Thank you, Mike. Thank well, you. we'll see you. We'll see you next month. But before that, we'll see you at our live show. Yeah. We will. Oh, 28th 28, 28 of June. <laughs> at the Duchess. The West End, in the Duchess. Well, yes. I wish you all great good luck, ladies, and I'll be there. Thank you. Lovely Thank you. Thank you. see you for a real life cuddle. Lovely. Can't yeah. wait. <laughs> bye, darling. Thank you, I'll darling. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. 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 Oh, bye -bye. Bye -bye. Oh, brilliant. So are we all going to be plunge pool ladies? Yes, I think yes. so. I think so. No, because you know the canal, darling. You've got the canal right now. No, no, not in the <laughs> No, don't like water. No, dear. Oh, no, I like it. I'm going to, I'm going to, no, I think that would be a very good idea. I used to have a pool in my old house and that used to be great because I used to go very early in the morning, but it was very warm. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, yeah. he has to be at space. least 36 oh, degrees to get in it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like a bar. on Wednesday, darling. Well, we've got the amazing Sarah Green, oh, and I'm just so excited that she's coming. And I spent an hour on the phone to her the other day, and I, she's just one of those people that it's so lovely to know. I'm so excited. You know, but, but before then, tomorrow at 4.30, we have got the second episode of the dead agent. So don't forget to watch it tomorrow at four thirty. The case of the dead agent, which is being solved by the Wonderbirds, or or not, as the case. Well, yes. Ooh. Who did it? Who, Who done it? Who did Let's it? Who did it? Who done, done it, mate? Who done, done it, it? darling? <laughs> Bye. We got no idea. We ju we just did it. Anyway, exactly. we'll see you tomorrow in the case of the dead agent, and then we'll see you on Wednesday. Yeah.